right, guys, welcome to another episode of Side Quest Podcast, the unofficial podcast of Fitocracy. If you guys have not checked us out on Facebook, check us out there at Side Quest Podcast. You can find us on Twitter as well at SideQuest FM, and you can also find us on Instagram at SideQuest FM, or go to the website at SideQuestPodcast.com. Have some blogs up there. A lot of things changing on that on that side of the that side of the uh, the spectrum, but uh, more to come on that a little later. Uh, unless you hear this episode after I've made the changes, so then welcome to the new website. Uh, but I am I am working on that. I have a great guest tonight. If you guys listened to the Super Bowl Sunday Fun Time Show, uh, he was on there as a guest, uh, and as I said on that show, you guys would hear from him. Uh, as well here in the future. So uh, we finally got that locked down, uh, and I am welcoming back to the show, though this time in his own one-on-one interview, uh, Mason Woodruff. Mason, Mason, welcome to the show. Thanks, Robbie. Glad to be on. <laughs> so tell people who don't know uh, who you are or, or where you came from, tell, tell me a little bit about your backstory. Who is Mason Woodruff? All right. Um, so I'm from Arkansas, uh, Little Rock. Um, growing up, you know, we'll get into the creation story a little bit. Growing up, um, was always an athlete. You know, I'm about 6'5 now, and I'd say in the seventh grade, I was probably 6'3, something like that. So naturally kind of gravitated to the basketball court. Um, you know, was, was a pretty good player growing up. I uh, got into high school, you know, my goal all through childhood was Division One basketball, um, so to play college basketball. Uh, when I got in high school, um, parents split up, you know, stayed with my dad, and then um, really started eating a uh, a bachelor diet, you know. <laughs> you know sorry, Dad. You know, I, I love my dad to death, but, um, you know, KFC Famous Bowls and uh, McDonald's breakfast were staples, so... Uh, <laughs> You know, and it really, I didn't notice it at the time, but it really kind of affected my performance. Um, and it, it really ended up kind of hurting me, you know, I ended up injuring my knees, uh, putting on some weight, you know, and it really, it really did hurt my, my basketball in my mind, you know, career. Um, so once I got into college, you know, kind of bounced around uh, with what I wanted to do, you know, at that point, I was like, well, I don't I don't know, you know, maybe physical therapy, you know, couldn't, couldn't really find my, find my path. It took me some time. Um, and then I really found, a, found my avenue after gaining even more weight. Um, finally got into fitness, you know, I said time to make a change. Um, got into fitness and just caught the, caught the bug, man. And from there it was just, uh, changed my major to nutrition. Um, ended up graduating with a degree in nutrition uh, you know, started doing more serious strength training, got into coaching and personal training, and uh, here I am. Here I am now. <laughs> <laughs> are you Are you still in Little Rock? Yeah, yeah, still here in Little Rock. Um, I went to school right up the road in a small town called Conway, uh, the University of Central Arkansas. <laughs> uh, yeah, keeping it small town. <laughs> I actually, I, I have a, a good friend from uh, from my video game. Uh, uh, clan days and uh, he's uh, he's in Conway. I, I I know he listens every once in a while, but uh, yeah. I stopped by a few years ago and, and had a beer with him. Um, he may he may know me then. Yeah, he may know me. <laughs> I used to play a few games in my day. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Arkansas is such a beautiful state. Oh uh, yeah. Just dri- like driving through it, um, like I honestly felt like I was home in North Carolina. You know, like mm-hmm. you don't. I guess you don't really think about. Uh, I guess when you think Arkansas, you kind of think, oh, like Missouri and sort of like no. Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't want to say it. But, uh, hey, lots, lots of hills for hillbillies and uh, mountains. But, but yeah, it really is. A, it's like, a beautiful state. It is, and and like just where I drove through, I was like, man, like like the rolling hills and the small mountain. Like this is like where I grew up. I was like, this is this is amazing, um, especially a whole lot different from the flat Oklahoma and Texas panhandle area. Mm-hmm. Like we had driven through own 40 and you're just like, Oh God, when is it? Good? Oh yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> and, and here in Little Rock, you know, um, because there is so much to do like hiking, uh, biking, you know, we have over, 
we have hundreds of miles of like bike trails. So Little Rock's kind of becoming a, a real fitness hub. Everyone is kind of fitness minded now, and it, it's really kind of exciting, um, especially in comparison to the rest of the state because we are one of the the most obese states. You know, I think Mississippi's <laughs> still got us beat, but we're we're probably coming in about forty uh, ninth on the fitness scale. Uh, but Little Rock is really, you know, has a good budding fitness community. Um, so it's a cool place to be right now, especially, you know, starting out my career. Um, it's a fun place to be. Awesome. Cool. So what do you, so what do you do? Do you hike or do you bike? Like when you're not lifting weights, if you're on a Saturday and it's a beautiful day in Little Rock, like what, what do you do, you know, to get out and, and do things that are not just being in a gym? Oh man, I'd love to say I still hiked, um, but you know, car anything over five reps is cardio, Robbie. Um, <laughs> uh, so, so I don't, I don't do that much anymore. Um, but yeah, yeah, I used to live, you know, right next to Pinnacle Mountain, which is one of the the bigger mountains in Arkansas. So I would go hike it quite a bit. But um, you know, these days I don't do a ton. Um, I just stay pretty busy. You know, my downtime. Tends to be uh, on the couch or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. Um, so I know you're, like you said, you're new to the world and and, and you've you've been blogging for for a little bit. Um, but I, I wanted to ask a, a couple of things from from things that I that I have read. Um, and you know, you talk in, in in one of your posts about behaviors and and getting in shape and and adhering to a new diet or honestly anything. It's all behavior change. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's creating new habits, it's, it's creating a new lifestyle, um, which is the hardest thing. I mean, if fitness was easy, if, if eating better was easy, then we wouldn't have jobs right. in an industry. Right. You know, like every, everyone would do it. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, like you said, you, you were athletic and you grew up playing sports and then you kind of got a little away from that and it kind of had to come back to, well, it's time to get out of the – Twinkies and ho hos and <laughs> back to the, the salads and, and some lean meats. Um, so, which behaviors were the hardest for you to change as you started to, to venture down this road? Um, definitely nutrition. Uh, yeah, everything nutrition related. Um, you know, I tell my clients all the time. You know, I went to get a nutrition degree, and I'm probably uh, one of the worst to ask nutrition advice. Um, <laughs> Just because it's it's so um, – nutrition is, is exhausting to me, uh, to be completely honest. Um, you know, but just because it's so hard. Like if you're getting any resistance from a person, it's going to be nutrition-related. Um, the strength training is fairly straightforward, and I find it the most fun. Um, but, yeah, like, if you know, if you can figure out how to change a person's behavior on the nutrition side, figure out why they binge, why they – um, like the foods that they do, why they can't give them up, why they can't adhere to any kind of diet, um, you'd be a rich man. You know, you'll be a, you'll be very successful in this field. Um, but it's really hard, you know. Um, for me personally, you know, growing up in high school, like I said, me and my dad would eat lots of fast food. Going into college, lots of fast food, and for me, still, I struggle with, you know fast food and convenience foods and things like that. Um, so I, I completely understand where people have that problem. Um, but what I always tell people is, you know, we kind of have to figure out what works for them. Uh, you know, so that's, that's a big thing I do. I'm not, uh, you, know, you know, I had a blog post recently called Every Diet Works. Um, I'm kind of in the camp, like, I don't care if you want to eat paleo. I don't care if you want to track macros whatever, you know, like one of the first questions I'll ask them is like, well, you know, wh what diets have you tried in the past and what diet do you want to, would you want to try? What do you think would work? Um, and then generally whatever they say, unless it's something just ridiculous like plexus or you know, something like that, slim fast diet, I'll say, cool, that's what we're doing and I'm going to help you with it. Um, because nutrition, whereas strength training, you know, you can start someone on a beginner strength training program uh, and you know, nine times out of ten, they're not going to have a ton of trouble sticking to it. Nutrition, you throw two things at somebody, um, and I found that that's too much, you know. Say, uh, hey, well, you know, we really need to put a vegetable a day in. 
oh, and by the way, I want you, you know, drinking more water. And then they come back a week later and say, well, you know, I did it for one day, and then the second day I screwed up. And then, you know, I just said, fuck it. Um, I'm, I'm done with that. You know, and, that, and that's it's completely human. Um, that's completely human, you know. I think once uh, once someone fails, uh, we're very prone to just give up. Uh, you know, we don't handle failure very well. Uh, we're kind of conditioned to not accept failure. Um, yeah. So the, I hope that answered your question a little bit. I kind of rambled there. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's 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 what that's what happens on the show sometimes. It's it's yeah. you know I, I like that. It's a little more it's a little more natural. No, yeah. you you're right. I, I mean we, I I I wish I could understand why we're conditioned to fail. Um, I was listening to, I don't even remember who it was. Um, it was probably someone on, someone on some podcast, and they were saying that you know forty five percent of what we do every single day is habitual. So mm-hmm. like almost almost fifty percent of what we do is almost just automatic. Like, mm-hmm. and that's why it's so hard, you know, because we start breaking those things that are automatic. And and humans are creatures of habit. I I think. Mental, I mean, physically, your body is always looking for homeostasis. And I think your mind mentally is always looking for homeostasis. So mm-hmm. it's going to find those ways that it doesn't have to burn enormous amounts of energy to survive, you know, and it, and it can mm-hmm. get it into a groove. And breaking that groove is, you're right, it is, oh, it's, the, it's the magic pill that everyone's looking for. Right. Oh, yeah, it takes a lot of work. Um, so, so when you, so when you break, when you break your diet or, or whatever, uh, and I do have to say, I, I do love some fast food breakfast. Um, now that I do more intermittent fasting, uh, uh, I kind of miss breakfast, um, yeah. a lot. And I got to say Taco Bell breakfast, as horrible as it is for you, something about that crunch wrap, man. It's so good. But, um, the McDonald's sausage, uh, sausage burritos, those, those were my jam as a kid. Oh yeah. Um, but uh, but anyways, so when you break, when you when you have a big mess up day, and you might feel a little guilty, maybe you don't, or you have a week where you go on vacation. What foods are your cornerstones? Like, what do you are you able to come back to that gets you right back on that on that path? Oh man, um, you know I'm not a huge salad guy. Um, I do like I do like a good salad, but. Um, I feel like they're kind of glorified in the fitness community, you know, like, or, or not the fitness community, not people that, that really know fitness, but the, you know, just the general population, they think, Oh, I'm dieting. I better go get some salad, you know? Right. Um, right. And you don't have to, uh, I'd say, you know, kind of my staples, you know, I'm a, I'm a meat and potatoes kind of guy. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, from Arkansas, you know, I, I love, uh, you know, my chicken, my steak, my beef, um, and I'm a, just a huge breakfast food guy, man. I love I love eggs, and eggs are super nutritious. Um, oh yeah, eggs eggs are fantastic. Yeah, same as bacon too. I mean, and oh, everybody's kind of coming that's, around. That's that's the one thing where I'm like, all right, how can I fit bacon into like dinner every week? <laughs> you know, like some <laughs> Sundays, like I'll get up and I'll make like a I'll make like a like a quiche because I miss yeah. eggs as well. Right. Um, but. And and I and I may go back to eating breakfast. I just it's it's easy. I like intermittent fasting because it keeps me right. Eating a bunch of donuts that people bring to work. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know? that's true. Yeah, uh, see that's that's what kind of works for you. Um, and I I don't necessarily intermittent fast, but um, you know, a lot of days I'll get up, especially if I'm working from home or something like that. Just have my coffee, and then you know, I, I don't feel like eating, so I'm yeah. You know, I don't it's not necessarily set in stone that breakfast is the most important meal anymore. And, and people are kind of starting to come around on a lot of these things like, you know, like intermittent fasting. Thank you. You know, like the six small meals a day is kind of going out. Um, same thing with bacon and eggs, you know, eggs were like, Oh, you better keep the egg white and throw out the yolk. And bacon was, um, just a no, no in general. Um, and now thanks to the, if it fits your macros and intermittent fasting, that's the, and the paleo, and that stuff's kind of coming back in, and uh, thank goodness. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think there's always this weird ebb and flow um, with with a lot of things. You know, for a while it was cardio only. 
mm-hmm. don't squat, it'll kill you. And then it's kind of come back to weightlifting. And now you've got like obstacle races, which throw in everything. Right. And then you've got like, um, it, it, there are, I think it does these weird pendulums right. where everyone's looking, everyone's yeah. looking to make a buck on something. Mm-hmm. Um, and I but, will say this, um, you know, a lot of people now are still in that no cardio camp. And I, I was even kind of admittedly, I'm still a little bit on that side, you know, as far yeah. as like you don't need as much as it, it's not all you need, you know, like people's first reaction, especially January, February, the New Year's resolutioners, um, they come in, just get on a treadmill and you don't need that. But I will say, you know, recently I've kind of come back around and cardio and running and stuff like that. It is beneficial. Um even even if you're a power lifter or someone that's an Olympic lifter or whatever, doing some kind of conditioning, whether it's running sprints, I mean sprints are definitely superior to jogging, but there are some benefits, you know. And if someone likes to do that, um, whereas in the past I would say, let's quit doing cardio. You know, that's just it's kind of setting somebody up for failure because you're taking out what they like and you're putting in something new. Um, so even I'm coming around, you know, you kind of have to change your opinions on a lot of things, especially in an industry that changes like this one. Um, yeah. 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 You got to no, be constantly changing. And, and I, I, I've instituted Sunday is, you know, Sunday is now chest and conditioning day for me. Like, And I'm not mm-hmm. doing a bunch of running. Um, mm-hmm. It's basically just some, you know, quick reactive stuff that we can, that I, you know, we're, we're done in like 10, 15 minutes. I'm not running for miles. I'm not doing, you know, I'm, I'm doing stuff to keep the heart rate up and, and work yeah. on, that, on that aspect. Um, I also yeah, have makes you feel good. Yeah, it does. It does. Um, and I, I love sprints as much as anyone. Um, I've kind of gotten into this thing where, like, I want to train more for, like, power and finesse. Like, I yeah. want to train like an NFL player. Yeah. Like, I swear to God, mentally, I'm behind like four or five years where I should be. Like, I still think I'm in my mid twenties, and my body's trying to tell me, "No, you're not." Yeah. Uh, so, so you're you're a big guy, and and I know you do you know you do a lot of of, uh, of heavy lifting, and and you one of your programs on photography was working on building mass. But what is your like favorite power and explosive exercise? What do you do, um, you know, to work on that sort of fast? Um, you know, side of, of your fitness? Um, I used to be a big fan of box jumps, um, especially like a dead stop box jump, so where you're sitting on another box or something like that, uh, or doing like max effort vertical leap or something like that. Um, but that is a lot of impact, uh, and they can tend to be dangerous, especially, and they're hard to recommend because if someone doesn't have a box and they're trying to jump up on something crazy. Um, that's not good. So I've kind of transitioned into a kettlebell swing. Um, really great, especially if you can find some heavier ones. Really great for uh, building explosive power in the hips. Um, and if you have explosive hips, you're explosive everywhere. Um, it's all that's like, right. That's right, boys. Hips. Listen up. <laughs> it's all in the hips. Yeah. In the hip. It's you know I was thinking. I'm not even kidding you. I literally was thinking that. Like I was thinking about like the hip hinge. Um, uh, I was talking to to a trainer last night, and you know, I was at the gym the other day, and I was just like, man, like I that the hip hinge to me when it's mm-hmm. perfectly done, it's 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 beautiful because it, it it is like it, the body moves like it's supposed to, you right. know, and and you see like I see my nephew bend down to pick things up, and I'm like squat, like you just mm-hmm. like never forget what you're doing, oh yeah, um, and you see it, and I just think like man, it's it's so beautiful, and then all of a sudden. Chubbs from like Happy Gilmore popped in my head. And he's like, it's all in the yes. hips. Uh, amen. <laughs> uh, so speaking of kettlebells, I know you do a little training with that. I have like a 15 pound. I have, I have mm-hmm. a couple. I need to get some heavier ones, but damn, oh, yeah. they're expensive. Oh, I know. Um, so how do you use them? Like why kettlebells? And you mentioned you know, the explosive power of, of the hips. Um, so why kettlebells and how do you use them as a coach? Well, Kind of coming back around to conditioning, um, kettlebell, like especially kettlebell swings, um, well, really any kettlebell variation is is a good way, and it's one of the few movements that you can kind of work on conditioning and strength training. Um, and I actually have an article on this 
that was summing up some research on the benefits of hypertrophy or muscle building, um, power development, and VO2 max improvement, all from kettlebell swings. Um, so it's a really good bang for your buck, you know. Um, you know, Jason Helms from Any Man Fitness is all about the return on investment. Um, and when I think of that, I think about the kettlebell swing. Um, but as far as in coaching, um, I don't get too far away from just the two-arm basic kettlebell swing. Um, just because some of the other stuff can get a little dangerous. If I have a more advanced training, I can do uh, the kettlebell snatch is probably one of my other favorites. Um, I don't do a ton of, of cleans with it just because you can hit yourself in the face. Um, and the wrist, like it, that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's my biggest complaint, you know, people, especially when you get into the heavier kettlebells. Um, that whip, it takes a really good technique and it takes a lot of practice. Um, and generally with my one-on-one -on -one clients, like in-person clients, I don't have a ton of time. Um, so I could spend... I could spend two sessions a week, you know, 30 minutes at a time and still wouldn't be able to teach them um, how to kettlebell snatch correctly or, you know, safely. Um, so it takes a lot of time and I can send them homework and stuff, but, you know, your more dedicated clients will do that and your others will come back in and say, what's a, what's a kettlebell swing, you know? So, um, but yeah, man, kettlebells, the kettlebell snatch, the kettlebell snatch, if you can do one right, is probably one of the best um, for shoulder stability, shoulder development, hip development. Um, I would say it's it's better than the swing. It's better than shoulder press, all that. Um, really good, really good. Okay. Um, do you do you? So if someone get you know like starts working out with kettlebells and they really love it and they go buy their own um, and they're like a one you know a one on one. Uh, training you know trainee with you do do you you know try to incorporate those in you know to their off days like do you say hey on on a rest day like take the whole day off or do you say you know what if you want to do like 50 kettlebell swings in the morning to kind of get your body going do that or do you do you like as a coach strictly tell you know your clients you know what rest don't don't really do anything besides like maybe some walking right no i, I have some guys um I have a guy now, an online client from Through Fitocracy, um, who we do, you know, he's kind of working on his powerlifting totals, but he's a really active guy, and he's always, you know, he's like, more, 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 you know, what else can I do, what else can I do? So I have him kettlebell swinging three or four days a week, you know, on his off days. Um, and, you know, you don't have to just do swings or snatches or anything like that. Um, one of my female clients, she works out at home and she has a kettlebell. You can do sumo squats with a kettlebell, goblet mm -hmm. squats, um, overhead lunges, farmer's carries. Um, they're, it's a really versatile piece of equipment. Um, you know, if you were going to buy something for an at-home gym or whatever, getting some kettlebells would probably be better than a barbell, to be honest, um, just because you can do pretty much the same stuff. You can do a front rack squat with it. Um, you can do pretty much the same stuff as a barbell, especially if you're not into lifting really heavy weights. Um, so for women, uh, kettlebells are really good. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll have people do kettlebell swings as a warm-up uh, if we're doing like a hip hinge workout like deadlifts or something like that. Really good warm-up. Um, movements like that and movements like you were talking about earlier, you know, working on that explosiveness, are I find they're best at the beginning of a workout you prime your nervous system, and then you get into your strength movements. Uh, the nervous system's good to go, and it actually improves your performance as opposed to doing like stretching or just getting on a bike for five minutes and then going to squat. Um, right. Doing some jumps or something like that really, really gets you going. Yeah, I, I kind of hate that. I don't know why the gym that I work out at. It's a student gym. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why they don't have kettlebells. Like it's the one. It's the one thing. <laughs> They're like every semester I've come back, um, or they, you know, they close down for like two weeks every semester. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they don't have kettlebells. And I'm like, but you just bought like all new machines and stuff. That, like, <laughs> just get some kettlebells. Yeah. Um, uh, so anyways, all right. So a couple of fun questions, uh, for, um, here for you. So don't know when this is going to air exactly yet, but I'm sure it will be, you know, a week or, or a couple of weeks after this, mm -hmm. this event has happened. But, uh, 
the mountain, the man, the myth, the legend from Game of Thrones, uh, actually now became a legend himself. He broke a thousand-year-old record in Iceland by carrying this, this. Have you seen it? No, I, I saw uh, on Fidocracy's Facebook page that posted it, but I didn't get a chance to read it today. Oh, what is it like one of the telephone poles or whatever? Um, no, it's so supposedly the story goes is that there is this this tree trunk or or something something um, I can't remember exactly, and this guy carried it on his back for three steps, and then it like broke his back, and you know he was crippled or whatever for the, but no <laughs> one's at, no one man you know it took fifty men to lift this, and this guy carries it for like five steps. Huh. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I thought I would. I, yeah, I thought I would ask you about that since uh, you know I know you're you're a strength guy and, and but um, on to the next question I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so are you going to ask me if you think I can do it? Because the answer would probably be no, no. <laughs> no. I watch. It's funny because you see him do it, and it's not like it's not like he really. It's not like he put it on his back like a sack mm-hmm. and carried it. I mean. He's got it lifted off of, of the rack that it's hanging on, mm-hmm. but it's like five, like they're I mean, they're five baby steps. He made steps, but yeah. it's not like it's not like he was making big strides. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, oh. pretty 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 impressive. And now knowing that there is the world's strongest Viking competition, I'm like, uh oh. Oh yeah, man, you'd fit right in. Oh, I know. Like the <laughs> Viking blood inside of me was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> By oh, yeah, the power go of here, I must go to this. Yeah. Start a, <laughs> go cut you down on a telephone pole and start training out back. <laughs> I mean, I did I do enjoy Highland Games when they when they throw the when they toss the caber, which is yeah. basically just a giant telephone pole that you try to flip over end on end. Right. What can I say? The people of that area, my, my people's heritage, we had some weird games, but you know whatever. What what what, what are you gonna do? The strongman uh, training is kind of coming around, which is which is pretty exciting. Uh, yeah, I I I would love to get in and do some Atlas Stone training uh, myself, mm-hmm. just because I think it it kind of takes me back. <laughs> it's so weird to think this, but it takes me back to like growing up on my my uh, on the farm with like my grandfather when mm-hmm. he was like pick up this fifty pound bag, and you're like ten, and you're like yeah. so you're using like your whole body just to like get it up oh, to yeah. your shoulder. Uh, so that I think that would be interesting in, in lifting things where you're using more than just I'm going to squat this down and push back oh, yeah. up. That's fun. And, and, yeah. You know, I hate the word functional, but it's all functional. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what do you what do you do to take care of yourself, Mason? Like if you're if you're working out hard and you're in a program and, and you're lifting heavy and, and often, what do you do? You foam roll? Do you go to you know, get massages every like five, six weeks. Do you use the cross balls? Like, what is your your way of taking care of yourself? Do you put on yoga pants on Friday and go do yoga? <laughs> um, well, that's kind of funny. Uh, right after my, uh, I teach some boot camps in the morning, um, and right after my boot camp, some days our yoga teacher comes in, and she's been trying to get me in there for months now, but <laughs> I'm yet to do it. I, I need to do it. My flexibility is terrible. Um, but yeah, I used to foam roll and I used to lacrosse ball. I used to do all the soft tissue work. Um, and to be honest, in the past few months, I've kind of gotten away from it. And I don't tell it. I can't tell a big difference. Um, you know, I started. There really is no scientific research behind the foam rolling and all that. Besides, it right. just it feels good. Like yeah, there's no doubt that it kind of loosens you up. But performance wise and wise, you know, what. Show me some proof. Um, but anyway, I haven't seen a ton of difference. Um, I don't really go to for massages. The last deep tissue I had, I told the girl, you know, hey, you're really going to have to get in there. Um, and she didn't. So it's it's always kind of disappointing. Um, so I haven't gone for one of those in a while. I would say that my biggest recovery method is just um, nutrition, uh, making sure, you know, you're getting your protein in and, and then on top of that, your sleep. Um, sleep is huge for all of my clients. I have them. Um, I, I give them a sleep log. Um, we work on getting, you know, at least your eight hours. And on top of that, having like a set routine. So the same bedtime as best you can, and then mainly the same times getting up uh, every day. You know, getting your sleep cycles down. Um, 
and I feel like comparing, you know, your benefits from sleep uh, compared to all your other kind of recovery methods and hacks or whatever you want to call them, uh, just ten times, ten times better than than most of that stuff. Um, Dr. Kirk Parsley, have you ever heard of him? No. Uh, he's got some really good stuff. Uh, I think Barbell Shrugged, you know, their podcast. Yep. They they interviewed him a few episodes back. Um, super interesting, you know, on testosterone and growth hormone and adrenal gland function and all that stuff. If you want to get sciencey and and nerd out. <laughs> oh, I, I will I will download it tomorrow. I I enjoy some some sciencey nerdy things. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I there's there's a, like I think that's that's one of the things I'm doing now is I'm s doing small experiments on myself just mm -hmm. because um I feel safe doing it on myself. And it's nothing crazy. Oh, oh, I mean, yeah. it's, it's it's nothing crazy. I mean, I'm I'm um you know, I'm I'm doing a, a little different cut this time, mm -hmm. um, which is a little more enjoyable and a little easier um, than things I've done in the past. Um, and then I'm going to experiment a little with like reverse, uh, reverse dieting. Dieting. yeah. Um, just because okay. I didn't do it right with my honeymoon, and now I've yeah, I've heard your stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got back and I was like, 17 pounds, dear God. How <laughs> oh, much haggis did quick. I eat? Yeah, it comes on quick. Um, yeah, yeah I, mean, I, I love uh, like Tim Ferriss. You know, he's a big you know, self-experimentation guy. Um, and I'll tell you what I'm doing right now. I For the whole month of February, I feel a little guilty saying this. Um, for the whole month of February, I'm, I'm not cooking. Um, so no cooked meals. I, I, I get kind of tired of uh, catching blowback from clients and just people that ask me for advice and stuff like that when they tell me they struggle with convenience foods and they don't like to cook. And then when I say it's fine, you can be, you can achieve your fitness goals, you know, not cooking all the time. Um, and it's hard to get that past somebody. So for this whole month, um, I got my body weight, body fat, all that taken at the first of the month and uh, tracking everything I eat and most of it is fast food, some restaurants. Um, <laughs> and then come March 1st, we'll see, you know, we'll see if I lost weight or lost body fat. Um, but you know, I, 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 will, I will say with tracking everything, I'm tracking it so it's set up to where I should, you know, my macros and my calories are set up to where I should lose a little bit of weight if not maintain. Um, so I just wanted to show that it can be done. Um, it's definitely doable uh, in, in everything in moderation. But we'll see. I, I, I like that. That's similar to the guy who uh, there was a nutritionist. Uh, was it Kansas oh, State? I, I knew, yeah, the, the Twinkie guy. The Twinkie guy, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so today I was like, you know what? Bring me the Froyo and the Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I'm losing weight the fun way. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, man, it, it – um, Calories do matter, you know. I will say that, um, cal or like food quality matters, uh, but food quantity at the end of the day really, really matters. Um, right, right. I mean, you, you, if, if I think, I think this is one of the things you know when people were like, oh, we're throwing our money away with, with taking vitamins. Mm -hmm. How like if if you are literally eating, if you're in a food desert and all you have is a Seven Eleven. You know, then then you probably need your micronutrients, right? You know, it's not it's not super hard for most people to 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 hit their calories. Yeah. Oh you yeah. Know, at least not in this day and age, it shouldn't be. I mean, <laughs> no, no way. Yeah. The amount of food I see that gets thrown out of grocery stores, it's right. Oh yeah. It's it's amazing, and and if, <laughs> I feel like that's one thing. If we could all like figure out what our maintenance calories were and really understood like. Mm -hmm. you know, how to fuel our bodies. Mm -hmm. We probably wouldn't need gigantic grocery stores, and Costco would go out of business. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I get a lot of people, I see a lot of, especially my in-person clients, um, you know, I have some women that, you know, 250 plus that come in, and they say, I don't eat much at all. Um, I say, well, I kind of believe you, uh, because, you know, like, you know, if you're talking about reverse dieting, you know, metabolic damage, you know, They've been doing. They've been yo-yo dieting for years. They've been eating mm -hmm. probably in the, close to a thousand calories a day, and their body, their metabolism just adapts. Um, so I believe them to a certain extent. You know, some people probably do have some type of metabolic damage, if you want to call it that. 
where their metabolisms are so slow. But a lot of people don't think they're eating a lot, but they really are eating a lot. Um, oh yeah, it, you know, and it's the the biggest thing comes from. I mean, I see people who who drink three or four Mountain Dews a day. Right. You know, oh yeah. At, at work, and that's you. You don't you don't really think about it, but I mean, that's just like mm -hmm. that's there's what thirty. Let's say there's thirty. There's thirty. You know, you know thirty carbs, thirty grams of sugar mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's almost. 700 calories in a day if you have like right. three of them oh yeah oh yeah that's <laughs> that's way too much but yeah that's that's what i run into most um is people you know i don't i don't eat anything i hardly eat anything i don't eat much for breakfast i don't eat much for lunch dinner is usually pretty bad and that's where you know usually when i ask well what do you mean pretty bad and then we figure out that they're probably eating about 2,000 calories for dinner um, yeah yeah, so, you know, everybody, going, going out to everybody eat, going out to eat. that is that yeah. is that is that is a pitfall and finding um, which which I, I I do enjoy now that you see uh, some more of your chain restaurants like Chili's mm -hmm. going meals for like 600 calories or lower and I'm like yeah. you actually got a decent amount of protein in that oh it's yeah veggies but most of those are bullshit anyway like I, well, no, I saw I Applebee's mean, I went to Applebee's once and. Uh, ordered some meal that said it had 550 calories and it was like an eight ounce steak. It was broccoli with butter. I mean, it was, I was like, Oh, I mean, there's multiply this by about three, you know? Yeah. Uh, right. Right. So that, that That's kind of a problem, but yeah, I agree with you. It's really cool that, that all these places are becoming more health conscious, uh, aware. Um, yeah. You know. At, 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 at some point. Um, cool. Um, all right, so so I gotta ask, um, you you got some you got some huge arms, dude. Like, <laughs> jealous. I'm not gonna lie. I saw your picture on photography, and I was like, <laughs> I want the. I I feel bad saying this because I I don't think that. I, I I don't. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Maybe I'm in denial. I don't know. I don't think I have like a body dysmorphia type thing. Mm -hmm. I just I see people with like big arms, and I appreciate them, and I'm like, man. I want to have art, you know, like, like, and, and it's a goal that maybe someday I'll work towards. I don't know. Um, right. Maybe I've hit my genetic potential being a lowly five foot nine. I don't <laughs> know. Um, but there are, there are times that like, um, you know, I'll be in the gym and I'm like, man, my arms feel really small. And then like, I'll see a picture. I'm like, no, they're actually huge. Right. What, what oh, is, yeah. what is the mirror doing? What is the lighting doing? Oh um, yeah, man. So, so, one of my smallest areas is from my wrist to my elbow. My whole forearm is tiny. No uh -huh. matter what I do, no matter what I do, it's like my forearms and my calves, they're like, we're not going to do anything. We, don't, yeah. we, don't, we have no cells that can grow down here. <laughs> so what do you do for forearm development? How do you help it for yourself or with clients? Like what are your – is it farmer's carries? Is it things, um, you know, like um, – like front squats or, or things where like you've got that pressure on your mm -hmm. forearms, what do you use? Um, well, first of all, I appreciate the compliments. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but I am right Family. there. With you. I'm right there with you on a uh, team. No calves. Uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> awful. Uh, it's awful. Man. And I've, and I've tried everything. Um, and I have clients ask me all the time, like, Hey, why, why don't I have any work for, uh, for my calves in here? I'm like, Trust me, I've already tried everything there is to, to try with calves, and that, none of it works. So, <laughs> waste your time. Um, but yeah, anyway, for forearms, um, farmers carries are great. You know, I have almost everyone I work with do farmers carries, uh, but that's mainly for for grip strength. Um, you know, a stronger grip transfers to stronger lifts in every lift, essentially. Um, going back to the nervous system, you know, turning the nervous system on with a stronger grip. But farmer's carries are great for grip uh, and forearm development. Uh, heavy deadlifts, um, pull-ups. Uh, pull-ups, especially like neutral grip, like parallel grip pull-ups. Um, all those are really good. Um, I do do some front squats, but not enough to accredit uh, my forearm development to them. So. <laughs> um, and as far as just arm development overall, I would say – Compound movements. Um, I hardly ever, you know, for the past year, 
I'm getting more into it now because I'm kind of wanting to play to my strengths. Like my arms are definitely my, my strength. Um, so I'm like, well, hell, I might as well just go with it. But anyway, um, <laughs> you know, I, I put on a lot of weight in the past two years. You know, I, I weigh around 275, 280 now. So doing pull-ups and dips with that much weight, I, I kind of accredit any tricep and bicep gain to those movements. Um, just moving my body weight around. So keep it keep it big. Keep it big movements, man. Um, isolation well, work if you if you want to have some fun. Right, right. Yeah, I uh, I finally have gone back to the uh, to the weighted chin ups. So I'm hoping uh, oh, a yeah. little bit a little bit of that translates to the four. It's just it's so weird because it's like I don't they just they I don't know. I don't yeah. know what it is. Oh, they just I feel you, they seem so small, <laughs> and I'm like, what? What? I can't do anything. They don't. And yeah. the no calf club. Yep, definitely. <laughs> like I can, oh, yeah. I can probably, I could probably calf raise. I had 145 the other day. I could probably calf raise like 185 with no problem. Yeah. But th- like, there's gonna be no development. Oh, they yeah. don't, I could buy right three miles. You. They're not going to go anywhere. All right. I'm right there with you. My, <laughs> my legs in general, um, you know, I, I'm not so bad that people accuse me of skipping leg day. But, um, you know, I, I got my squat up to over 500 and my deadlift over 600. And I was like, well, surely I'll have some big legs. And I did not. <laughs> so, yeah. you, kinda, you know, genetics play a huge role. Um, like, Neither neither one of us will ever be Mr. Olympia. Um, no matter how many steroids we take, uh, we weren't built for it. So, well, know. sadly, if you if if I were to show anyone pictures of like my great grandfather and uh, actually my two great grandfathers, even my dad, my dad's like six two and he's a big guy, and I'm like, mm-hmm. what, what happened to me? Why did I get the? I was the runt. That's it. Because I'm a ginger. Genetic the genetic <laughs> pool just made me the runt of my family. And everyone else got like the big muscular, and yeah. I just got whatever I got. Yeah, well, <laughs> hey, you got to do the best with what you got. Um, yeah, there you go, there you go. So, um, so I always ask. Uh, so, just a couple more questions, and uh, and I always ask this of, of all the uh, the people that come on. Um, so, who either in the fitness world or outside of it, who who inspires you in your life, uh, and do you kind of look up to, and and you know. Do you listen to or books that you read when you when you're having a, a bad day? Um, I'm a big I'm a big YouTube and uh, and podcast guy. Um, so you know, a few years back when I was first getting into strength training and coaching, Elliot Hulse. I don't know if you know him from yep. Strength Camp. He's a um, he kind of gets on the weird side from time to time, like behavior change and stuff like that. But he's a, overall he's a smart guy. Um, and there are some other, you know, the fitness YouTubers that are that are smart. Some of them are full of shit. Um, but podcasts, you know, Tim Ferriss, Bar- the Barbell Shrug guys, I really love. Um, for the past two years or so, you know, I probably I probably catch every episode they put out. Um, uh, it, I'm kind of a the sciencey guy, um, you know. Even though some of my writing, Greg Knuckles, I, I you know, you had him on the podcast. He's by far the science guy. Um, but that kind of style appeals to me. Um, so those kind of podcasts, stuff like that is, is what I really like to, to get into when I have some time or when I, especially when I'm driving, stuff like that. Yeah. I, I, I love, um, at work, there's a, there's a ton of things that, that I listen to. Uh, and a lot of things I suggest to all of my friends, um, whether mm-hmm. it be cereal, like I got hooked like I don't think I got any work done the day that like I listened to that entire series, um, and then like hardcore history is by far like I d- I want more of it. Like I just want more four hour episodes of finding out of how badass and awesome the Mongolians were and how <laughs> like, you like it's so crazy because our history is so like we're America. We came over from England. We kicked their asses, and now right. we're awesome. Like you don't realize that oh, yeah. so much of the Western world was influenced by like this small group of people in like, oh, yeah. you know in in East Asia. Um, oh yeah, oh, I love history. That was one yeah. of my uh, when I was trying to figure out life. Uh, I wanted to be a, like a history teacher. Um, 
but then my mom, my mom and stepdad are both teachers and coaches, and they thankfully they talked me out of it. So, <laughs> yeah. And is, it your, is your wife is she and is she going for a master's in teaching or education? She, she is getting her master's in theater pedagogy, which is the Greek way of saying like teacher. Yeah. Um, so it's a little different. Yeah, she's wanting to teach at the collegiate level, um, yeah. maybe high school. Mm-hmm. But I, I gotta say, man, I I don't. Were were we? I know every generation asks it. I know it, and it's stupid, and I feel like an old man. But <laughs> man, did our teachers think we were this dumb when we were kids? Like, did like we we didn't have Twitter and we didn't have hashtags and we didn't have all of this. Maybe we right. weren't that great, but. Man, I couldn't do it. I don't think I could do it. Like I admire oh, yeah. Jason and Any Man Fitness for for teaching oh, yeah. for teaching kids. I don't I don't think I could do it. I, I just know, I don't I have patience. Well, <laughs> well, kids today, you know, like um, my stepsister is still in high school, and kids now, I mean, they're smart. I would probably even say they're they're smarter, you know, but they're smarter about other things, not not what we're teaching them uh, or right. what like you and I were taught. Um, you know, like math, and I kind of agree with them to a certain extent. Like some of that stuff isn't necessarily that important. You know, I wish when I was going through school, somebody would have taught me about uh, a lot of stuff I'm dealing with now, like uh, starting my own business. You know, uh, yeah. What is a 1099 tax form? <laughs> you know, uh, no one, no one taught me how to balance a budget. No one taught me how to live on a budget. Right. Yeah. Or forming you know, an LLC. Uh, you know, like what the hell is that? You know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, all that stuff, you know, like that could be really beneficial. And I, I know you can take, you know, and I've even taken business classes in college. Um, and some of that stuff was kind of skipped over. Um, but, you know, I feel like we, the education system could change a little bit. But, yeah, kids these days, I mean, they're they're kind of catching on to that too at an earlier age. And they're saying, well, uh, why do I need to know history? And, and to a certain extent, you definitely do. You know, I love history. But do you need – Six classes on history? Probably not. Um, well, I think it, I think it comes back to you're gonna you're going and especially with like the internet, you are going to learn the things that you are right. interested in. Yeah. You know, if I'm like I took advanced math, not because I was really interested in it, but mostly because I was a smart kid and that's what I was supposed to do. So smart right. kid, go take the smart kid class. Yeah, you know, like I did. Th- I took theater and fell in love with it because I I loved doing it. I wanted I wanted to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and then now the same thing with like fitness. You know, I I love it. It's 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 interesting. Yeah. It stimulates oh, yeah. my mind, and, and it's something I I enjoy to do. Right. Um, and that's yeah, I, I, I really, you know, have you ever seen the TED talk of the guy that um, talks about how we should teach our kids to be more creative and entrepreneurs and things like that. Um, because we do kind of push kids through, you know, like high school and into college. Like you need to pick what you're going to do and that's what you're going to do for the rest of your life. And things aren't necessarily like it? that anymore. No one, no one, do you know, I didn't know how to talk to a woman when I was 18, much less know what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Right. I was terrified to walk up to a woman and be like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> like I'm going to know what to do with the rest yeah. of my life. Oh yeah. I'm still that way. <laughs> But but even still, like it, it, I at twenty eight, I still haven't. I don't. I don't know. I yeah. like the future terrifying. But it's, but it's but, fun though, right? Like, um, yeah. I like, tell people all the time, like you know, I'm not real sure how long I'll I'll run my own business. Um, which I will say, my dad, you know, he's he's had his own business my entire life. So seeing that and growing up around that, I've always kind of had the entrepreneurial bug. Um, but I tell people all the time, I don't know how long it'll last, how long I can do this, but uh, you better believe I'm going to do it as long as possible because I wake up every day and I have fun. I mean, I have a blast every day. I don't ever feel like, oh, shit, I got to get up and go to work, you know. Um, lucky lucky you. Like I'm, working, I'm working on that one. <laughs> you're just, yeah, you're still going. Um, but yeah, man, just picking something that you like to do. And I promise, you know, like that saying is kind of cliche, like, do what you love and you'll never work or do your passion and the money will come. But it's kind of true. You know, um, there are a few times where it feels kind of surreal and I'm like, well, is this really happening to me? You know, and it's like, well, you know what I put in the work and 
and this is what I love to do. This is what should happen, right? So uh, yeah, yeah it's fun, I mean, and, I, and I wish more people, more kids, uh, would do that because um, the education system is very flawed. <laughs> yeah, and they they have the tools in their hands to do amazing amazing things. Um, I just I just hope. That even our generation and the generation that's below us, we got to start dreaming bigger again. Like we can, <laughs> let's stop dreaming about. I want to make an app that will clock, you know, my walking speed. Like no, right. we should be on Mars by now. Yeah, oh, yeah. Why are we not on Mars? Yeah. Why are we sending robots? Like oh yeah. What, you know, like we, flying cars. Yeah. yeah, like we should have cured many of these diseases a long time ago. Like we, right. we started the human genome. Like why, where, why? Yeah. Let's do this. You know, oh, like yeah. Elon Musk, you're awesome. Hopefully the robots don't take us over and kill us all. Yeah. <laughs> um, which is terrifying in and of itself because people are like, oh, he's crazy. And I'm like, really? Really? He's crazy? I don't uh -huh. think he's crazy. But... <laughs> I'm just saying, maybe oh, that's. I, I agree. Was. I agree with you. Yeah. yeah All right. Were. So, so last question. I, I always ask it. I think it's fun. What is your guilty pleasure track that's on your workout mix? Oh man, um, I should have been ready for this. Or are you all Pantera all the time? No, I actually. Um, kind of a rap guy. I hate to admit it, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of a rap guy. Um, let me think. I'm sure I've got something. Um. Oh man. When I get some time, I want to put all these together and and, and do a Spotify list, but uh, with everyone's yeah. guilty pleasure. So I don't know. I will say this. Um, I don't have a ton of music on my phone anymore. I just mainly listen to Pandora. Um, but I do. I really like two cellos. Have you ever heard this? These guys. There's two guys just play the cello. No, but that sounds awesome. I mean, yeah, it's really not a guilty pleasure, but it's kind of kind of weird, I guess. But they play a lot of covers of, um, like, their Thunderstruck video, and they did a Johnny Cash song. Um, and, man, they're awesome. And, and I've catch myself, like, listening to that during a workout, even though it's not very workout-friendly. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't have much Katy Perry or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Uh, someday I'll let everyone know what my uh... – my guilty pleasure song is so. Yeah, I guess I haven't heard yours yet. You have what, nope. one song. Nope, it's it's song? it's one. It is one song. Um, oh, okay. And I I just I feel. Uh, is it this generation or is it old? No, it is it is a '90s track. I'm a '90s guy, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm a '90s guy. I, I, I love like, rock. Yeah. It's yep. Yeah, it's it's. I love the '90s on Nine on Sirius. <laughs> it's it's like I, I I'm a '90s dude. That's I love it. Nothing Still wrong with back. that. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Man. I love some '90s rock. Yeah. Makes it. If people want to know more about you, where can they find you online? Are you on uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, website? Yeah, the website uh, MasonWoodruffHealth.com, uh, Facebook page Mason Woodruff Health and Fitness, and Instagram Mason underscore Woodruff. Um, those are probably the three busiest platforms um don't get on twitter too much uh, so yeah that's that's the best three there cool all right well mason thank you so much for coming on the show guys i hope you enjoyed uh listening to us to chat about fitness to education uh to his lack of guilty pleasure tracks uh <laughs> and everything else um he's on photography as well check him out there follow him i know he does classes from time to time uh, and hoping big things uh, for Mason here in the future. So, Mason, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, guys, all the links to all of his uh, social networks and, and his website will be on the show notes as well, so check those out there. Uh, but, Mason, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, Robbie.